1968, the Beatles went to India uh, to learn how to meditate. And, and, and then um, I heard quite a bit about it and was in the media. It was interesting. And then I tried, um, I, I learned how to meditate. Um, and it was, um, it was definitely life-changing. I would say that um, probably more than anything, it had a bigger effect on my life than practically anything. Uh, because of, of how it works, and the way it works is, it's it, it's it's basically open mindedness. So what happens is, normally uh, you can't control your brain. If you, if you were to sit down and uh, say, "I'm not going to think," uh, it will be filled with stuff, and it'll jump all over, and you can't control it. Um, so what happens is, this is an exercise that creates open mindedness. Because um, it, 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 there's a, a, a word that doesn't make sense, which is called a mantra. So it's a sound that you repeat. And so while your brain is wanting to uh, jump all over the place by repeating this sound um, mentally, um, it takes your attention away from those thoughts. And then by when you continue to repeat it, it goes away. And so there's nothing. And so you go into nothingness. Okay, now when you go into that nothingness, um, first of all, you've, you've learned the ability to control your brain so that you can go there. You can put things away. You can approach them in a certain way. Um, when you go into that, that open-mindedness, um, you're going into your subconscious. So you're not a state of conscious, so I'm not aware, but I'm not asleep. Um, asleep is... You know, you hear a sound, you won't wake up. This is, if I hear the slightest sound, I'm, you know, attuned to it. So it's a state of um, subconsciousness. And, and um, there are different parts of our brain that have a very big influence on us. The amygdala is the part of the brain that has the fight or flight that produces anxiety. Um, the prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain which we call for executive functioning, where it's the part that's reflective. It's the part that um, we, we are calm and we say, do we want to do that? Do we not want to do that? We put things in perspective. Those two parts of the brain are fight for with each other. In other words, the passion, I'm going to do that because it's exciting, but it may be harmful. The other part of the brain says, you don't want to do that. And so that whole emotional fight or flight part of the brain during meditation, um, through brain imaging, they see that that calms down and the prefrontal cortex lights up. So um, that open-mindedness creates um, where creativity comes from because creativity is not coming from the working the brain in the I will work hard and think about it in that I will muscle it through. It comes from this relaxation. It's just like it's an opening up and, you know, take a hot shower and don't be thinking of something. And some great idea comes through and you grab the great idea. So meditation is very much um, like that. It opens, it opens the mind, creates an openness, a freedom It's uh, in which that, I don't know whether we would say intuition or those, that creativity just kind of comes through and it creates an equanimity. That, in other words, you could step back and you can um, put things in perspective. It doesn't lessen your emotions. The emotions are the same, but you can step back and say, I'm not going to be controlled by that emotion or let me put things. And I think it then helps to see things at a higher level.